Small businesses are still in recovery mode because of the pandemic, and there are still resources available. So I decided to have an expert come on and talk about what small businesses should be doing now and also what they should be doing in the future to prepare. Nicole Thousand is a CPA, and she's this week's guest on Two Kids and a Career. Blondin Professional Real Estate is a family-owned boutique-style brokerage with over 40 years' experience serving the counties that surround St. Louis. See how their approach to real estate will help you by visiting BlondinRealEstate.com. What happens when you put a career-focused woman with two kids trying to balance home and work life in a room with a microphone? Lots of laughter, tears, and great advice. I'm Jill Devine, and welcome to Two Kids and a Career. I decided that I wanted to get an expert on this podcast as far as, and I hate to start off with saying numbers because I'm not a numbers girl and I'm not good with math, but I needed someone to talk through the layman term, so to speak, to make it make sense for what's happening with small businesses, what's happening with taxpayers, what's happening with all of this stuff with our economy because of coronavirus. So I thought the perfect person to talk to would be Nicole Thousand. She is a small business owner. She is a mom and her business is Thousand CPA Services. So she knows all the numbers, don't you, Nicole? (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely, all of them. <laughs> so in the middle of tax season, coronavirus hits. How in the heck have you survived all this? Well, the funny thing is that I look back to when all of this started, you know, 4,937 days ago is my joke. Oh. Um, <laughs> I keep saying that I feel like it. everybody else maybe saw it coming a little bit. I definitely did not because, you know, if you think of this all really, I feel like, it hit the fan on March 15th. And um, that's when we are deep into tax season. We're preparing, reviewing, trying to get 700 tax returns out the door. Um, And I definitely saw some news headlines, but I clearly remember going, okay, this is going to happen and we've we've got to move and grabbing everybody and saying, okay, we got to have a meeting. Um, I remember using the, our, our large shred recycle bin as a podium so I can make notes and saying, guys, it looks like we might be working from home for a little bit. So let's talk about all of the issues we may have because we've got to figure them out. Um, And, you know, trying to be, I guess, a leader, if you will, in very uncertain times, but at the same time, using my team's expertise to say, let's, let's try to start solving these problems that are going to come up. So how did that meeting look as far as, was it, we're freaking out, we don't have the resources or, hey, we have the resources and this is how it's going to be? I think for the most part, um, you know, our business, the the way I started Thousand CPA Services, I guess more than 10 years ago at this point was it was really going to be a resource for um, a working mom uh, just to be able to have uh, work to come, like a place to come to work, still be a professional, but then still have that work-life balance that unfortunately doesn't really exist that much in the public accounting world. Um, And the reason I mention that is because Prior to three years ago, I think we were all women, um, and and most of my employees do have kids. And so that being said, we do have a really well remote working environment. Um, I myself have hours that I try to be home not too long after the kids, you know, get out of school or pick them up from, you know, aftercare. But then maybe I'm back online at seven, eight o'clock, doing a couple things until ten o'clock. So again, the reason I mentioned that is that we were pretty well set up to work remote. This wasn't like all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I print everything, we have paper files, we walk things to to and from everybody's office. I feel like we were a good 70 to 80% of the way there. There were just some other pieces that we had to say, okay, who's gonna, how do the phones ring? Who helps do backup? Just those basic things that probably a ton of other business owners were going through as well. Uh, and, and I think it went as well as it could. There was a lot of uncertainty. We have an amazing team in this office. Everybody wants the success of clients and the success of Thousand CPA, but it was definitely a very crazy time. Yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like normally, but then on top of tax season. And so I want to get into that in just a minute about all those new rules and regulations. I know we're surpassed that. We're in the month of June now, but um, before we get to that, what about you? I mean, I know you just said that 
you did a little bit of remote working at home because you put together this business with working moms in in your mind, but now you went to full-time working mom at home. How was that transition and how does it continue to look for you right now? Well, everybody got a new title, um, <laughs> you know, remote CPA slash teacher. Yep. So there was that challenge. <laughs> Yep. So, you know, it's it's it wasn't even just working from home. It was working from home and realizing it wasn't nine to five because at some point your kids can't watch Frozen for the fourth time and you actually right. might have to feed them something besides cereal at some point. Right. So, you know, it was it was policies of okay, let's let's have a group chat and if you're gonna walk away because it's nice and you wanna you wanna get outside, then just let everybody know you're doing that. So it's been a lot of Zoom calls. Um, trying to make everybody feel connected, but a lot of also communication because everybody is not working at the same time. Um, so that part was definitely a challenge. Uh, it just took some commitment of scheduling the staff meetings, having everybody respond to emails, and also being realistic about what to expect. I can't tell you how many conversations I had in my own head of, okay, well, I'd really like for this to happen. And then going, okay, I'm at home working with my two and I can't do that. So how can they do that? So really setting realistic expectations um, to help make everybody a little less crazy during this time. You really just have to throw all the norms out the window. Well, and I would continue to tell myself whenever something was going crazy or if I was on the phone with someone and I needed to get some answers for whatever it may be. And then the girls are crying in the background and I'm like, this is what's happening with everyone. Mm -hmm. So I I stopped apologizing. I mean, like it is the same. It is what it is, but that's what it, it came to me is like. If you can't give someone grace during this, then that's on yeah. you. Because... It's true. It's true. And, you know, I think we, I feel like it, I got to almost a different level with clients because I'd be talking to them and hear their kids in the background. Mm-hmm. It's not that I don't know they have kids and they and we don't do the normal beginning of the meeting. How are the kids and what sports are they in? But, you know, I'd hear little Johnny come up and ask dad about where his basketball or his Nintendo Switch was. But at the same time, they'd hear my daughter come in and say, mom, mom, hold on. No, mom, 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 mom. Right. So it was like, <laughs> oh, we all are going through this at the same time. One hundred percent. Have your kids appreciated you being home or is it just each day is a new day? <laughs> you know, I, and they... They love when I'm working from home because we, I have been, um, we fall under that essential class, right? So we can come into work a little bit and there was some of us that did, some of us that didn't. Um, And so there might be days when I would come into the office and work and they would always say, mom, are you going to work from home today? And I was always really surprised that they wanted me to work from home because I'm not always the nicest when I'm working from (laughs) home because honestly, I'm usually trying to be in the middle of some thought about a PPP loan or I don't even know what, and somebody's coming up and asking me where the goldfish are, but they definitely like to have you close, I think. All right. So the things that you've seen and the things that you maybe anticipate with all of this, here's the thing. I know that all of these different things came out, you know, the, the deadline for filing your taxes, that was uh, released early on, maybe not in your opinion, but well, what was funny about that is that we weren't wanting that to happen at first, because when you talk about extending a tax deadline to anybody who doesn't live in the world, they think, well, that's better. You have more time. But to us, we look at April 15th as the beginning of the rest of our year, because the first part of the year didn't exist. So for us, April 15th ends the crazy hours and begins life. So the thought right. of pushing that to July 15th, the, the beginning talks in my office were, I don't really care if July 15th is the tax deadline. In our office, it's April 15th. And I had everyone behind me going, yeah, that's right. And then all of a sudden, the PPP loans hit. And then it became, we've got to change our attention away from getting, you know, the Smith's tax return out and instead to, you know, the, the shop that has to close the doors because they don't really know how they're going to make payroll. And I am so thankful for that tax extension at this point. And I never in a million years thought I would say those words. So for those that have not filed as of right now, 
they still have until July 15th. That's correct. And they don't okay. need to do it. They didn't have to do anything on April 15th. No extension was necessary. Okay. So then is there anything else that I'm missing with taxes that we need to talk about or that's pretty much it? It is a really exciting subject, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why people should use you and your services because at least you're fun. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can't laugh about taxes, I don't really know what you can do. Um, no, so first and second quarter estimates are both also due on July 15th. I think that's been a common question for us. And I would say, you know, with of course the fine print at the bottom, that most deadlines that happened on April 15th for you know, different contributions, those were also extended to July 15th. So pretty much the April 15th deadline just moved to July 15th. Okay. So small business owners, and you see all these different things that are coming out about these loans and what the government can do for you. But if you do this, then this needs to happen and whatnot. Is it too late for a small business to apply for any help? No. Um, so the there are a lot of, and I, I tend to go on autopilot. I joke when somebody asks me about PPP loans that they were probably just asking how my day was, and I'm 20 minutes later, they're sleeping because I've told them everything they need to know, so I'm going to try not to do that. Um, but there were a lot of different relief options that came out. Uh, the CARES Act had some relief that, you know, if, if you have an employee who can't come to work because they do have child care, there is an option that, um, that they – they have a paid sick leave that's reimbursed. So the employer, and again, these are very high level, um, but the employer can get reimbursed while the employee is getting sick pay to stay at home with the child. It's not full 100%, it's 67% of their pay. Um, and there's there's a lot of variables. There's different sick pay options under that. Um, there is payroll tax where you don't have to send in your payroll taxes. You can delay those slightly. Again, there's a lot more to that. But the one that everybody's talking about is the PPP loans. Um, that was a payroll protection plan. And that was the loan that was all over the news. Um, and the most, the, the biggest trait that everyone knows about that one is that it's supposed to be forgivable. And that has pretty much been our life from March 15th until I would say still today, at least half of my day has to do with talking through client, talking with clients about um, how does it get forgiven? What do I need to do? Um, and, and can I still do it? The first round ran out of money in days. Um, they had applications. You know, they, they just were completely overloaded. The banks didn't have direction. It was, it, was, it was executed fast. They had to do something fast, but the cost of doing something fast is that there's not a lot of guidance. Um, and they started a second round. So if there is a business who has not applied for a PPP loan, there is a possibility that they could still get one. What else does the average consumer or taxpayer, however you want to word, word it, what should they be aware of right now or what should they know as far as finances and moving forward that you as the expert can tell them? You know, it goes back to our general business belief in that every small business owner should be working closely with their CPA. Um, and Jill, as you know, just from us talking before, we don't, we are not a transactional CPA firm. We believe in constant communication with our clients. That's probably the two most repeated words in my office is just constant communication. Just we, we meet with our clients quarterly. Um, so we're having cash flow conversations all the time already. So my, my answer to that is a cash flow conversation with your CPA, because whether you have a PPP loan or you don't, you've got to know how much money you have right now and how long that money is going to last. So it has got, you've got to be planning on how to recover and not just react. Well, you're right. I mean, I have talked to quite a few people and, and no offense to anybody that is reopening a small business owner, but I'm not ready to go in just yet. I need some time. I need a little bit more time. I need a little bit more guidance. I need a little bit more, hey, let's see how things are going. So that is a good point because I think there might be individuals that are thinking, okay, as soon as I open, things are going to go back to the way they were. I'm going to make the money. Well, what happened those last few months? I mean, that's stuff that you have to take into consideration. I have a brother who owns a restaurant. And um, I, I talked to him 
and he says, well, nobody's going to do X, Y, and Z. And I say, well, I, I don't think that you can say everybody's going to be left or everybody's going to be right. It's everybody's different. And I think the biggest mistake somebody can make is think, because I'm, I, as a business owner, am so ready to go and so ready to unlock those doors, I'm going to have this huge inflow of people because I feel that way instead of thinking there are five people and all five of them feel different. So we've got to plan for all five of those cash flow options. So looking forward, and I, and you know, everybody's trying to make these different predictions, but looking forward to even 2021, do you see your business being affected in a different way because you are helping other small businesses and helping with taxes? No, that's a, I've thought about that a lot because I don't even know which way to go first between a tax return or a PPP or some sort of a CARES Act sick pay. Um, I'm thinking we're crazy busy and I don't see this changing, like life getting back to normal for us until realistically next tax season's over because it kind of put us behind three months. Um, I don't, think it will change our approach with our clients. And honestly, the reason I can say that is because we've always had this constant communication approach with our clients. We've not ever been this transactional, we'll see you at the end of the year. Uh, So I think if anything, you know, maybe we'll try to get in front of everybody a little more, but I got to tell you, I'm not surprised if some of our clients get sick of us, we reach out so much. So I feel like we want to keep doing the same thing with them. When you say that, I can make this observation right now. The place that I have had my taxes done, I haven't heard from them once. Mm-hmm. So that that's a very good point that you make there, that you are doing what you can to help your clientele and to make sure that they know what's going on. We reached out from the beginning. You know, it was picking up the phone and starting to call people and say, hey, I'm sure you're seeing this coming down the pipeline. We're reading these acts as... I will never, ever read draft law before it becomes actual because that was a part of my life I would like to rewind and not Mm. do because there is no point. But Yeah, yeah, you don't get that time back. (laughs) We will all never get that time back. Um, As soon as they passed the law and we knew what it was, we were picking up the phone and calling clients and saying, hey, here's what you're reading. We've got this under control. Sending video updates. Um, Just making them feel like, you know, we, we got your back with this. We're in this together. I want to bring this up too. There are businesses that are actually doing really well right now too. So that's something for those businesses to consider too. I mean, they may have an increase in customers because of whatever it is that they do. So that's the other thing that you offer the help and the guidance to everyone that is in this situation with their small business. So even if someone is like, well, we don't normally have this kind of income or whatever, they can still turn to thousand CPA services to get the guidance and advice because the reverse might happen to them. They might not see the income come in as quickly as it is now in six months or so. So they have to be prepared just as the business owner right now that's not seeing anything. That's right. Because those are the people that we get to call and say you owe a bunch of tax and that is not a fun conversation. Mm. <laughs> it makes my skin crawl a little bit right there. Oh. I'd rather be having conversations of how we can save that tax in November so that we're all in the same page when I pick up the phone and say your tax return's done and they say, oh yeah, I already know. We talked about this in November. That is a much better conversation to have. How do people contact you and contact your business to learn more, just even to have a conversation to, to see if it just makes sense? Sure. So we um, we offer everybody to come in, talk to us. Uh, you know, first meeting, we, we just introduce how we, what our approach to this is, because we do feel like we're a little bit different than um, other firms. So you can either call the office Um, or go to the website. We have a lot of great information on our website. Uh, We've uploaded some new videos. We have a Facebook website with some, or not a Facebook website, a Facebook page with some videos as well. Uh, And if they call the office, uh, Mary or Keely will answer them and then they'll get them set up with more than likely myself or my partner, Matt, to, you know, walk through our approach. We learn more about the business and then they come back. We deliver a proposal of what we feel like is their path to success and decide if we want to move forward as a team. And what's the phone number and the website? Yep. The phone number is 636-532-9004.
and our website is thousandcpaservices.com. And I'll also have this in my show notes at jilldevine.com in case you were not able to write it down. Uh, Last minute thoughts, um, advice, anything that you think that us regular folk that know nothing about numbers or anything (laughs) need to know? You know, I think the, the piece of information that I pass most on to new clients is just monthly accounting, putting your financial statements. It's not rocket science, and it's not that we don't think business owners can do that themselves. Um, it's that, that same four hours of very frustrating times of trying to figure out what QuickBooks account to link your credit card to. Um, it just it doesn't make sense for a business owner's time because they can take, take that same four-hour time and be building their business So, you know, we want to take that data input off their hands and then offer the consulting approach quarterly to sit down with them and say, what can we do to help your businesses grow in the right direction? Um, I think it's just, it's almost just every small business owner tries to do so much themselves. And the best advice I can get is try to outsource some of that. Look at adding on to your team, um, to the experts that, you know, that's what they do best. Wonderfully said and great advice. That's why you're the best. That's why people need to go to you because (laughs) you're human and you get it and you're fun and um, you like wine and fashion. So (laughs) and the pool (laughs) and the pool. Yep. That's all. See, she is your girl. She is a mom. She's a small business owner and she is here to help you. So thank you so much, Nicole. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and if you're feeling really generous, write me a review. And don't forget to join me next week for a new episode of Two Kids and a Career.